Hello and welcome to another story of English with me, Daniel. Oh. Today is, uh, as you can see, uh, today I'm, I'm in Australia. Today we're going to look at Australian English. And maybe you can hear the change, but I'm actually going to teach today's story of English in an Australian accent. And we're going to compare between Southeast English, my normal accent, and Australian English. So, let's begin, guys. Australians always say good day, good day. It's very Australian and it means good day, good morning. So, good day, guys. I hope you're well. Shout out as well a little thank you to Matteo Pellegrino, who's been sending lots of messages on Facebook, especially on the story of English. And I think he asked for Australian English. So, Matteo, this is for you and many, many others. All right, guys, well, I hope you like my authentic rancher hat and my bogan shirt or my tattoos on display. Let's start with Australian English. And like I say, every time we talk about anything in English, sometimes to get to the heart of a story, you have to go back to the beginning. And that's what we're going to do with Australian English. So, Australian English, how long has it existed? Well, let's say about 150, 200 years, something like this, maybe more. Remember that Australia originally was a colony, but you have to go back to the people before, the, you know, the colonizers. Two flags. Can anybody tell me in the comments section below, whose flag is that? And whose flag is that? Hmm. A little bit of a clue there, obviously, but see if you can answer in the, uh, the comment section below. All right, so now remember, before the Europeans came to what we call Australia, originally Australia was and is still inhabited by the Aboriginal people. In fact, the music you heard in the beginning was a typical Aboriginal instrument called the didgeridoo. So the Aboriginal people have been in Australia for over 40,000 years, a very long time. And it's only in the last 200 years or so that Europeans have colonized Australia. So Australian English, where did it come from? Well, you had people coming down. You have to understand the relationship between Great Britain and Australia. Now, Great Britain at the time was one of the most dominant political forces in the world. And what happened was that everything was centered in London. And what happened was a lot of the criminals in Victorian Britain and Ireland were sent down to Australia. So in a sense, the first uh, was uh, 1788, New South Wales was established as a penal colony so it was like a criminal colony, if you like. Now, obviously, that meant that all the criminals were taken down. But also, you had to have the people in charge of them, the prison guards, that kind of thing. So the most common uh, criminals, if you like, at the time were people who were taken from the southeast of England and from London. Now, I've spoken two or three times in my last few videos about people from London, the poor part of London, are called Cockneys. If you've seen the accent challenge, you will have seen Darren's genuine accent. Now, the Cockneys in London, they have a very particular brogue, uh, but a very particular variety of speaking English. And Australian English, in a nutshell, came from Cockney. This initial accent was established, and then all the subsequent emigrations and all the subsequent, uh, subsequent criminals that were brought and sent down assimilated and you had lots of different accents mixing lots of accent from all over Britain and Ireland so you had southeast of England London Birmingham you had the Irish Dublin Scottish whatever and they all mixed but the original accent Australian English which was like Cockney English remained dominant so essentially Australian English is quite similar to uh, London English, if you like, Old Cockney English. But that's probably not doing it justice because that has changed. So it was around 1820, 1830, when it was officially recognized that Australian English had become distinct from British English. And so it was recognized as a, a variant. Now, we're talking about the backstory. You have to remember as well that with these criminal classes, 
it helps you understand not just Australian English, but the Australian mentality. Lots of the criminals, right, were taken from Britain and Ireland, sent down to the other side of the world, this hot, uninhabitable place, hostile environment. And what happened is that their mentality changed. They were criminals and so they had offspring, they reproduced and they had another generation and another generation of Australians. And their mentality was, we don't want to be like our British oppressors. So what do we want to do? We don't want to be rigid and formal. Now you have to remember that Britain, like all of the European countries at that time, even now, had a class system. The aristocracy or the nobility, and then you had the middle class and the working class, or the poor people. In Australia, there really, this doesn't exist because the mentality is, was, and is, everyone's equal, okay? This is a, a new world country of equality, equal opportunities, men, women, everyone's the same. So what happened was, this also influenced the language, the dialect of Australian English. So Australian English is very informal language. Now, I spent some time in Australia. Uh, back in 2016, I lived for a year in Australia. I spent seven months in Brisbane. I spent uh, a little bit of time in Sydney. And I also spent and lived for two months in Melbourne. Here's a question for you listeners out there. Can you tell me in the comments below, what is the capital of Australia? What is the capital of Australia? No cheating, no going on Google. See if you can answer below. Anyway, so I spent a year in Australia and I noticed that every time I spoke formally in a British sense, a hello, good afternoon, I'd like to make an inquiry, the Australians would laugh and say, mate, no worries, take it easy, because they don't like formality. It tends to be an informal uh, version of the language and the people in general. You have to also consider that it's incredibly big, there's lots of space, and it's incredibly hot. So it's quite different to the motherland. What's the motherland? The UK, Britain. Britain is very small compared to Australia and it's very cold and windy. Australians have a different mentality and that is a stereotypical thing they have all over the world, in fact. All right, let's move on to varieties. There are different varieties of Australian English. You have to remember, if you look at a map, if you look at Australia on the world map, it's absolutely huge, it's massive. Australia is, in effect, a continent. It's not a country, really, but a continent, right? I think most of Europe can fit inside Australia. If you look at the land mass, it's absolutely monstrous in size. I remember when I was flying to Australia for the first time, uh, I flew from London to Dubai, Dubai down to Brisbane. Anyway, from London to, du London to Dubai, uh, six hours. Dubai to Brisbane was, I think, 20 hours, something like that, 18 hours. Anyway, so flying, you know, watching films, whatever. And I remember the, the little screen on the back of the chair. It says, we are now technically above Australia. Wow, that's it, we're in Australia, I'm here. And we were in Western Australia, Perth. It took us from Western Australia to Queensland, the other side, it took five hours to fly across Australia. That's how big Australia is. Imagine if you flew from Bologna or Rome, Fiumicino, and imagine if you flew any direction for five hours, you'd be in a completely different country, right? So Australia really is absolutely huge. Now, there are three main varieties of Australian English. We have general Australian English in the middle. We have cultivated Australian English and we have broad Australian English. Now, like I said, there weren't any class systems. There isn't a class system in Australia, but we do have the variety. General Australian English is what I'm using now, okay? So it's not too strong, it's not too weak, it's just the, the, the general Australian English. People like, think of the famous actor uh, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine from X-Men, or Russell Crowe, they speak with general Australian English. Then you think about cultivated Australian English. Think of the actress Kate Blanchett from Lord of the Rings, she played Galadriel, or think of Geoffrey Rush, 
in the King's speech, uh, they spoke with a very cultivated form of Australian, which is very similar in some ways to more upper class British English. And so it's only a very small indicator. Then you've got broad English. I'm going to talk in broad English now. So you've got people like Steve Irwin, okay? If you've got time, if you get the chance, have a look for Steve Irwin on YouTube. He was the crocodile hunter. And Steve Irwin talks exactly like that. Everything is really, really exaggerated. Or well, maybe you look at the film, uh, Crocodile Dundee. Paul Hogan, really strong Australian accent. Yeah, no worries, mate. That's how they talk all the time. All right, so I'll go back to general Australian English so that you can understand. So these are the three varieties, okay? The most common one is general Australian English. Okay, right, let's move on to traits. Maybe you've already heard one or two things. Traits of Australian English, what are the, the characteristics? Well, one of the most common things with Australian English is that it's a very nasal variety of English, so it's in the nose. So the nasality of Australian English, a lot of it you talk like that and it sounds like you've got a cold or something. Make sure I wash my hands now. So it's a very nasal accent. A lot of it's quite up here in the nose. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now another thing that Australia, uh, Australian English is quite famous for in the English speaking world, or if you prefer the Anglosphere, is the register. Now the register, what does that mean? That's a false friend, right? Now remember my video from last week. The register means like the tone or the pitch. So Australian English has this reputation and you'll often find that people try to imitate this or they try to mimic when they're doing an Australian impression. Australians tend to have this kind of inquisitive or um, interrogative tone when they speak. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So Australians have this habit when they're talking and the, the, the tone always goes up at the end like that. And so what happens is they're talking all the time. And yeah, so last week I went down to the billboard and I got in my ute, my, my car, and I was driving around. And it's quite a funny thing that Australians do because a lot of people, especially non-English speakers, think it's a question. And they go, oh, uh, uh, it, was it a question? Nah, mate, I'm just talking like this all the time. So this is something that's quite unique to Australian English. And you'll find when people do impressions, they say, well, I, I'm from Australia and I like to play my didgeridoo and I like to throw my boomerang, right? Okay, so that's one of the common traits of Australian English. Now, I haven't actually included, but I'm gonna include something here on pronunciation. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare standard British English to Australian English. And I'm also going to include American English. So you're gonna have three variants of English. Standard British, standard Australian, standard American. So you can really hear the difference. Okay, so generally speaking, standard Australian English is very similar to standard British English. It's non-rotic. Now I keep mentioning this in my videos. Non-rotic means they don't pronounce the R or the R in American English. R, R, R in Australian English. So look at the word farm. Now, farm, of course, in British English, farm, farm. In American English, farm, farm. Quite phonetic. In Australian English, farm. So the vowel, the A and the R, are really exaggerated. So you've got words like farm, arm, car, far. Give you an example. Uh, yeah, excuse me, mate. I'm looking for the nearest, the nearest cash point. Yeah, it's just over there. Is it far? No, no, no. It's just 200 metres down the road. <clears throat> All right. Another thing that the Australian English does is it tends to have the short R. Right, so we talked about the trap, bath, split in one of my previous videos. Generally speaking, Australian English tends to have this, <clears throat> like British English. So, British, bath. Australian English, bath. American English, bath. Bath, bath, bath. So you can hear it's quite similar to British English, but not always. Sometimes Australian English has a very Americanized ah, ah 
sound. Example, answer, dance, chance. This is different from standard British English. It wasn't always like this, but what happened in the 1950s, lots of American TV and movies and films and Hollywood in general had lots of influence on Australian English. At the same time, during the Second World War, lots of American troops were stationed in Australia. Australia was bombed by the Japanese during the Second World War in the north, in Darwin. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what happened was you had lots of American troops stationed in Australia, and so they had a big influence on Australian English. This is why we have this pronunciation. Standard British, chance. Australian, chance. American, chance. Very similar, the last two. Um, the verb to answer. Now, British English, answer. This is like Darren, okay, or Gabriella, uh, or Helen. The two Helens, in fact, they would say answer. British English, answer. Australian English, answer. American English, answer. You can hear the Americans got the er at the end. So you can see this influence of American English on Australian English. Okay, guys, let's move on to something else now as well. Vocabulary. <clears throat> now, Australian English obviously has a lot of influence, like I keep saying, from London English, Old London English, and the southeast of England. But it's also absorbed lots of vocabulary from Aboriginal people. So this is what happened. You had the colonizers, let's say the settlers, came to Australia and they had contact with the Aboriginal people and they absorbed lots of words. And these words have now become mainstream English and I think international. I've mentioned a few, so think of didgeridoo, think of boomerang, think of billabong, okay? Lots of different things there. Can you tell me in the comments, what is a boomerang? What can you do with a boomerang? That's question one. Question two, what is a didgeridoo and what can you do with a didgeridoo? See if you can answer in the comments. Question three, what is a billabong? What is a billabong? This one's a bit of a, a tricky one. See if you can answer that as well in the comments and we will be writing back to you. So have a go, give it a red hot crack as they say. Other vocabulary, not just from Aboriginal things, of course, kangaroo, the animal, kangaroo, not kangaroo, right, that's Italian. Kangaroo, kangaroo. And what we do in Australian English, we like to abbreviate everything. Kangaroo, roo. I'm gonna give you now some more examples of Australian English because like I told you before, Australian English, representative of the people of Australia, is incredibly informal. And they've done this as well in their language. Lots of vocabulary in Australian English, similar to Southeast England, is abbreviated or contracted. I'm gonna give you some examples, right? I'll give you the original word, and then I'll give you the Australian version, right? Okay, present, like a gift, present. In Australian English, prezi, prezi, present, prezi. All right, uh, let's think of another one. Afternoon, afternoon, like good afternoon. Afternoon in Australian English becomes avo. Afternoon, avo. Here's an example. Gee, Dan, what are you doing this avo? Oh, I'm not sure, mate. I think I'll stay at home. Okay, another really good example barbecue, barbecue. Australian English, barbie, barbie. Not the doll, not Barbie, right? Like Barbie and Ken. Barbecue, Barbie. Gee, Dan, what are you doing this Arvo? I think I'm gonna have a Barbie at home. You wanna come over? Yeah, lovely. All right, so that's something else uh, in Australian. Um, let's see if you can guess. Football, football. What would be the Australian form? See if you can answer in the comments. Football, hmm. So we had barbecue, barbie. Afternoon, arvo. Present, prezi. Football, have a go in the comments. Now, football in Australia, it's not the same as what it would be in the UK. In the UK, football is the sport 
with a round ball and you kick the ball in the goal. Calcio, you call it in Italian. In Australia, this sport we call soccer. Soccer. Like in America, they say soccer, soccer. In Australia, soccer. Football in Australia, what's that? Football is, well, it can be one of the codes of football. Football can be rugby union, right? Which is one of the favorites of Simon and Alex. Rugby union, you call it rugby, right? Rugby union. Rugby league, rugby union, 15 players. Rugby league, 13 players. Or it could be Australian rules football, AFL. And this is a completely different sport, okay? So football in Australia is massive. See if you can tell us the contraction. All right, let's have a think of some other bits of vocabulary. Um, sometimes in Australia you have, it's very common, you have a beer, right? Everyone likes a drink and it's very hot as well. All right, so in Australia, instead of saying a cold beer, we just call it a stubby, stubby. Say, so, mate, you've got a stubby? Yeah, yeah. Now, I keep using the word mate, okay? Now, literally written down M-A-T-E. This is really British originally. I say this a lot, hello mate, hello mate, and it means friend, hello mate, okay? And so this came from the UK down to Australia, and now in Australia, it's probably more popular than in the UK. In Australia, it's so incredibly informal that people you don't know, you call them mate, okay? This is the, this is the legacy of Australian English. G'day mate, or excuse me mate, people you don't know. It's complete opposite to the UK, where it's uh, hello, good morning, uh, excuse me, um, could I ask you something please? Mate, someone you don't know, excuse me mate, yeah, where, where's the nearest cash point? Yeah, just down there mate. Thanks mate, cheers mate. Mate, mate, mate. There is even a TV channel in Australia called Mate, all right? And I've been watching lots of sports on Mate recently. So, can you think of how many mates you've got? I've got lots of mates. I've got Italian mates, Australian mates, British mates. I've got American mates, Irish, all over. Okay, let's move on to the spelling as well, all right? Now, this is not gonna take long because generally speaking, Australian English copies British English in its spelling, not American. Can you remember some of the traits of British English? One example is words like favourite or colour uh, or flavour. In British English, like in Australian English, we put the U. So it's like flavour, flavour. In American English, remember they remove the U. No difference in pronunciation, really. Flavour, flavour. So that's one thing we do. Another thing we do in Australian English is we keep the S. Words like realize, socialize, we use the S like in British English. In American English, they use the Z or the Z, the Z. Same pronunciation, realize, authorize, socialize. All right, so guys, we're gonna wrap up in a bit, but I just wanna talk a little bit about Australia. Australia is a country very close to my heart. All right, now I'm not an Australian, but like I said, I spent one year in Australia. If you haven't visited Australia, it's an absolutely beautiful country. The people are so friendly and informal as well. What we're going to do now to wrap up is, we've looked at all these different things in Australian English. Remember, you need to answer the questions. Whose are these flags and why, okay? What else can I include here? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing you a very famous folk song. It's an Australian folk song, and it's called Waltzing Matilda. And it goes something like this. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, will you waltzing Matilda with me? And the ghosts may be heard as they march by the billabong. Who'll come a waltzing Matilda with me? Sing it, waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. Who'll come a waltzing Matilda with me? And his ghost may be heard as they march by the billabong. Who'll come a waltzing Matilda with me? All right, guys, that was a little special bit for you. Thanks for watching the story of English. Remember, tell us in the comments, what would you like to see next? This was Australian English. What would you like to see next? Don't forget to like, 
My is Modena, my is Padma, and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Uru. Once a jolly swag man camped by a billabong under the shade of a coolie bar tree. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy ball. You come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy ball. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me.